Once again, class, welcome to all of you. We come with a study of the greatest book in the world. Obviously, if you are a Bible student, the Bible is that great book that we all try to uh, not only read, but to study. But we are asked by one of the holy writers, in fact, the Apostle Paul, that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. And uh, not only do you need to read the Bible, you need to study it and apply it to your life. So it, it is, the Bible is information, and then you kick in application, and then you turn on participation, and you'll find that your life can be a lot better, <coughs> can be a lot better. <coughs> I'm Terry Atwater, Minister Emeritus of the North Shore Church of Christ. Our minister is Brother Brooks Griffin, and certainly you need to come out and be with us in our services, and I think you will be, you, once, you come, once you come to our service and fellowship with us, you will never be the same. You may not ever come back again, but you will remember your uh, period of time uh, with us. It will be on, imprinted on your brain, and then you will have that desire to return again in the future. So come and be with us on Sundays, large day. 9 a.m., we began with devotion, worship, and classes. Uh, we have classes for all ages, uh, from the nursery class right on up to senior individuals in the pastoral phase. And also on Wednesdays, we have live Bible classes, 9.30 in the morning, uh, taught by our beloved brother Ronald Roberts. As a matter of fact, when I began my ministry, Ronald was about some 20 years old, and of course he's now uh, handling that particular class in the morning and in the evening. One of our elders, Brother James Slay, is the senior teacher of that particular class, doing just a marvelous, excellent, substantive job. <coughs> so you ought to come out and, and study in the middle of the week. As a matter of fact, you need to fellowship with, uh, with uh, like people, with those who uh, are New Testament Christians. You need to fellowship on the Lord's Day. You need to follow, Then you get another refueling in the middle of the week. And, of course, uh, get involved in our ministries. So you need to be doing something for the Lord on seven days a week. The Lord takes care of you seven days a week. He allows your heart to beat and your lungs to respirate <coughs> and your digestive system to work. Your circulatory system is working. And so the Lord is working with you 24-7. Uh, At least you can do is give the Lord something every day. Uh, on yesterday, we all were caught up with the uh, eclipse. Uh, that's the Lord doing his work, you know, when the moon comes between the earth and the sun. Uh, that happens frequently through around the world at various locations. And, of course, uh, we all got excited about it here in the United States because we were able to see something that is unique about nature. Everything about nature really is unique. It's unique just to see the rain. See the rain come and the rain go. See the snow come and the snow go. See the sun rise. Everything about nature is unique. Even the birth of a baby is unique. And even the passing of a loved one is unique uh, because that is the working of the God of heaven. <clears throat> All right. Now, students, you need in this class, as I always say, you need to have a pencil and paper or some type of writing material. And if you've got a laptop, uh, that's good. You can uh, get that on. And, if, of course, you need to have a copy of the Biblos or the Bible. You need the Bible because it is the essence of everything that we do. And because uh, you need to check me, you know, check what I, what I say and what I teach, uh, we all as human beings, all of us as human beings, we have a philosophy, we have an opinion. But your, your philosophy, my philosophy, your opinion and my opinion has no bearing on our salvation. What has a bearing on our salvation is what thus saith the Creator. What God says, what Christ says, and what the Holy Spirit communicates to us. All right, let's go to the Word and deal with a topic that I think might be helpful to us in our lives. See, there are many things biblically that we do, and we just don't know that we do them. 
Uh, and the, the problem is we haven't been taught. If you haven't been taught, you just don't know. And you do things out of ignorance. I believe one writer said over in the 17th chapter of Acts that the Lord said at the time of ignorance, God winked, God overlooked, but now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. When you are taught, then you come out of ignorance and get into intelligence. See, the Lord wants us all to be intelligent uh, and not just ignorant. Uh, when you don't know something, you're ignorant of that particular subject. Accept the fact that you are and that somebody can teach you uh, more perfectly. All right, <clears throat> let's uh, deal with this topic. If you have your Bibles, let's open your Bible up to the book of Hebrews. That is in the New Testament. Remember, we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. The Old Testament is written again, I want to say it again, is written for our information. It tells us how things were initiated, how they got started, how the world was created, how we got here, who we are, information, whereas the New Testament is our salvation, our justification, our reconciliation back to the Creator. Without the New Testament, there is no forgiveness of sin. There is no salvation. There is no church. There is no shedding of blood by Jesus without the New Testament. So the New Testament is the better covenant. It is the best covenant. The Old Testament is good, but the New Testament is better. So let's open up the New Testament now in this class and uh, go to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. That is our text. I have it written up here on uh, this easel board. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 14. I want to give you time to turn there, and while you're turning there, I just say that we at, here at North Shore Church of Christ, so where I'm in the, uh, in the edifice now uh, delivering this particular class, uh, come out and be with us on our campus, and I think you will certainly enjoy yourselves. We are people loving to serve people. That is our uh, general theme and our general motto. We love to serve people in the various ministries. All right, in the book of Hebrews, which is near the end of the New Testament, right before James, Hebrews, James, right after Philemon, Hebrews, chapter 5, just the last verse of that chapter. It says, well, i tell you what, i tell you, you know, <laughs> again, I'm the kind of person that if I'm teaching a verse, you need to get the context of the verse. If you don't get the context of the verse, then what happens is you typically we establish a pretext. In other words, I make up in my mind what something is and who's saying it, etc. So I have a pretext and then I don't and then I then I misapply the context of the verse that I want to, that I'm interested in. So I want to go back to about verse number 12. I'm going to read 12, 13, the last three verses of that particular chapter in Hebrews chapter 5. Now Hebrews is a beautiful book. This past large day I brought a lesson uh, before the church on that book. Uh, Brother Griffin was traveling out of town helping another congregation down in Chicago, the Chatham Avalon Church with Dr. Harrison is the minister. He was speaking there to assist Brother Harrison, and we <clears throat> certainly we had to cover for him back at North Shore. But in Hebrews chapter 5, beginning with verse 12, it says, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers. You know what it says? When you ought to be, there comes a time when you ought to do some teaching. You ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. See, <coughs> when you are just beginning to read and study the Bible, then you're on milk. It's kind of like a baby. A baby starts out on milk. The baby can digest milk. The baby can allow milk to get in it, into its uh, digestive system easily. Uh, you, you don't feed a baby a steak. You know, you don't do that because the baby cannot uh, digest that appropriately. 
And the same is true in Christianity. You start out on milk, and then you move to strong meat. That's verse 12. Then he says in verse 13, now by the way, the apparent writer of Hebrews is the Apostle Paul, says, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he or she is a babe. Okay? So you're unskillful. But there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I'm not, you know, the, the Bible is not looking down on anybody. We are at various levels of talent. See, you have some people that are one talent, some people are two talent, some people are five talent. Of course, the real issue is, do you know what your level is? That's the, that's the real issue. And when you find out, let's say if you're a one talent person, don't try to act like you're a five talent person. If you're a two, don't try to act like you are a five or a one. Just be yourself. Just be, you know, that way somebody can help you to move to the next level. All right, in verse 13, all right, in verse 14, that's our key verse. But strong meat, there you go. Now, when you get to a, ma a mature level, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. In other words, you, the maturation process has reached a more mature you're you more mature, and you're able to handle, uh, you know, you're, you're able to, it, well, let, let, me, let me put it to you like this class. If, if, if you go to a swimming pool, usually in a swimming pool, <coughs> there is the shallow end, and then there's, you know, there's a rope across usually the middle of the pool where it's more of a, uh, you know, maybe uh, four, four to five feet of water, and then you go down to the deeper end where it might be 15 feet deep, uh, you, you, you know, if, you, if you're just learning how to swim, you don't jump in 15 foot of water, you know. You, 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 if, if, if you're just learning how to swim, you know, you might just stick your toe in the water and uh, get, get a feel of what it's like to be in a, in a pool of water and then work yourself uh, out of the, what I would call the shallow end. And then you move into, a, you know, a little deeper water. And, and then once you know how to swim and tread water and... Uh, you know, take care of yourself, then you get into the deeper end. See, you, you, don't, you don't just jump in the Bible when you, and, and drown yourself. You know, you, you start out in shallow water and get somebody that was willing to be patient with you and teach you. So he says in verse 14, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. When you get to wh where you know what you're doing in the swimming pool, you know, you, you, then you can not only swim, you can do the backstroke, you can just sit out there in the middle of the pool and tread water, you can, you know, you, you, you can, you can uh, th th there's all kind of strokes you can do. You can jump off the diving board, you know, do a one and a half flip, do a two flip, <coughs> do, a, do a swan dive, you can do all of that, you know, once you, once you are a full age, a full maturity. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. There we go. There we go. My key word <coughs> is in that last sentence, discern. 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 That's a problem in the church. That's a problem in families. <coughs> that's a problem in our educational system. That's a problem in the government. That's a problem in the United States of America. That's a problem globally in the world is discern. The discernment challenge is our subject for this particular class. The discernment challenge. So Paul says, <coughs> when you reach full age, ah, you have your senses exercised, you're able to discern good and evil. Okay? Now, let, let, let's see if we can help you with this particular Bible study topic. Let's define the word discern. You know, you can see sometimes you, you got to define the one, one key to Bible study is what I call and many call word study, where you study a word. Sometimes in order to get the context or to get the message, you need to understand the words that make up the message. Okay? If you don't understand the words, I believe Solomon said, in all thy getting, get an understanding. And sometimes the key to getting understanding is just understand one word. Okay? And the word here is discern. 
Uh, now, let's, let's talk about discern. Okay? You got your pencil and paper ready? Just introductorily, let me share with you. Let's, let's just try to define that word design. I'll, I'll give you three thoughts along that line. One is, it, it is to see or identify differences. See or identify differences. All right, let, let, let's go back to our swimming pool concept. If you walk up to a swimming pool, and if it's not marked, you don't know what is the shallow end nor the deep end because the water is level, okay? Uh, you, you, ha you have no clue, all right? But if you have, if you've been around the swimming pool and if you understand the setup, then uh, you can see and identify the difference between the shallow end and the deep end, okay? Uh, t it takes time and effort and the exercising practice in order to be a good discerner. To be a, I, I, and I don't care how old you are. There are some things, you, you, no matter what, you still need time and experience to be a good discerner, to see and identify differences. Or, uh, let me use another word. Let me use another word. Uh, that would be the word distinguish. Uh, so, in, in item number one, you, can, you need to see and identify or to distinguish. Distinguish what, Brother Atwater? What do you mean by distinguish? Distinguish good from evil. See, if, 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 if you haven't been taught if, if, if you haven't been taught what's good and what's evil, you, you see everything as either good or evil. In fact, you, you don't even define it as good or define it as evil. You just define it as, I'm just being me. You know, I'm, you, you, have you heard people say that? You know, I'm reminded of my, you know, I, I, I love my professional engineer, uh, brother, brother Sims, who works in our media area. Every now and then he might say, I, I'm just being me. I'm just being me. Okay. There's nothing wrong with me just being me. Okay, sometimes me don't know me. <laughs> That's just like myself. Sometimes I don't know myself, okay? And so I need Andre to share with me so I can help. It helps me to know myself. There's certain things I don't know about myself unless somebody else tells me about myself, okay? So discern means to be able to distinguish good and evil. If, if, if one has never... Uh, if one has never been around anything that is evil, uh, they would know evil when they saw it. See, some people think that, uh, let, let me give you an example. January the 6th, back there in, 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 in uh, 20, uh, what was that, 2020, 20, uh, 2021? <coughs> January the 6th, when they went in there and, and, and tore up Washington, the, you know, our Capitol building. Those people thought they were doing good. You know, they acted as though they were doing good. Some people even said it was just a tour group, just tourists. They thought they were doing good. Tearing up stuff, they thought it, they were doing good, okay? Uh, that's because uh, their, 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 their consciences, their minds had been skewed and polluted. When your mind is polluted, you don't know the difference between good and evil. All right, or, or being able to distinguish. Hey, let's, let's use that word distinguish again. Distinguish between right and wrong. Some people don't have a clue to what is right or what is wrong. The former president recently said that uh, that 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 the people that are coming across the border they they are polluting the bloodstream of the United States. That that that's that that that's foolishness. That's a fool that says something like that. All right, you can't distinguish between right and wrong. Or let me give you another example. Distinguish, uh, learning how to distinguish between truth and error. Uh, see, sometimes, you know, see, if, if, if you do not have uh, maturity and a maturation in the Bible and, and the concepts of the Godhead, you will not know what is truth and what is error. You know, I've heard people say this. People say this quite frequently. They say, well, you know, uh, you can be saved in any church. Okay. That sounds good. It makes you feel good. 
You know, you can go anywhere you want to go. You make a choice. But that's not Bible. That's not Bible. As a matter of fact, biblically, there's only one church in the Bible. That's the church that Christ built. That's it. Christ only built one church, and that was the church of Christ. He, called, you know, he said, I'm building my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <coughs> All right? And then we find in Romans 16, 16, salute you one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. There are congregations of churches of Christ all over. They worship the same way. They, they practice the same thing. Uh, they, 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 have, have the, you know, they, they make the same judgment, make, have the same understanding of Scripture. All right, so distinguish is another, another, another concept of discern. See and, see and identify differences, distinguishing between good and evil, right and wrong, truth and error. Let, let me give you a second, second thought along the definition area of discern. That is, it's not a, t let me tell you what discern is not, okay? Let me tell you what it's not. That this, this will help you, I believe, right? I think it will. <clears throat> All right, it's not a challenge of choosing between the pleasant and the unpleasant. It's not choosing between what's pleasant and what's unpleasant. You, you know why I say that? Because sometimes that which is pleasant may be bad. You know, there's some things that's pleasant for you might be bad for you, okay? It, it may be pleasant for you to smoke weed. But it's ultimately bad for you, okay? Just because something is pleasant does not mean that it's pleasing to the Lord, okay? Now, let's go to the unpleasant side. Some things that are unpleasant may be good for you. Let me, let me give you that. There's some medicine you take that's unpleasant. I, I don't care how you cut it, it's unpleasant. But it's good for you, okay? L let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. It may be unpleasant to walk into the worship service of North Shore Church of Christ. It may be unpleasant, but it may very well be good for you, okay? So uh, that tells you what discernment is not. It's not deciding what's pleasant and unpleasant. Uh, it's, uh, let me give you another not. It's not what pleases me? See, we, 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 listen class, listen class, listen class, listen class, listen class. Uh, we in the United States of America have become a selfish people. Now, right now, we're arguing in the Congress, the House of Representatives, where we, mainly Republicans, are arguing of whether uh, to assist Ukraine uh, militarily <coughs> and financially. We're arguing about that. Okay. It's not what pleases me. <coughs> See, discernment is not pleasing me. But what is it then? But it's that which is best for me. Okay. In other words, it's not what pleases me but it's that which is best. See, sometimes the things, that, the things that please me is not best for me, okay? So it's that which is best for me, that which is best for others, that which is best for the church, that which is best for the family, that which is best for the school, that is best for the community, that which is best for the nation. It's not what's best for me, but it's what's best for the nation or that which is best for the gospel, okay? So that, that, that helps you to understand a little better of what discernment is not. It's not pleasing me, but it's that which is best for me or best for those that are around me. Let me give you a, let me give you a third. Let me give you a third thought on this as we try to define discern. Uh, a discernment. Great men, all right, let me say this to you now. Great men have faltered due to faulty discernment. Great men have failed due to faulty discernment. Let's, let's get a Bible passage, 
All right, let's go back into the Old Testament, okay? Now, I, I told you as I opened up just a moment ago that the Old Testament was what? Written for our learning. Uh, written for our information. Let's go back to the book of Job. Job is a book that is right before Psalms. Job chapter 32. Turn with me there. I'm going to give you time to flip back there now. Uh, if you got the book of Psalms, which is right in the middle of the Bible, and then you get the book right before Psalms, Job chapter 32. Job chapter 32. And uh, let's uh, look at verse number 9. All right, you got it, class? Okay, here's what it says. Great men. Th th I, now, I just told you that many great men have failed. They have failed because of terrible discernment. All right, let's see what Job said. Job, being guided by God, inspired by God, great men <coughs> are not always wise. <laughs> All right, you got that? Just because somebody is great, because they're highly visible, because they're good in basketball, because they're good in football, because they're good uh, politically, because they're well-known, because they uh, are highly uh, respected and all of that. Great men are not always wise. Watch this now. Neither do the aged understand judgment. All right, let me, let me say, let, let, let's say that, that that's a powerful verse right there. Just because you think you're great. See, most, most of us think we're great. Even when we're not great, we think we're great. Just because you think you're a great cook doesn't make you a great cook. Great people are not always wise, neither do those who are older understand judgment. Okay? So that, 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 that's, a, that, that's a concept uh, of, 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 of discernment to help you understand discernment. Now, class, let, 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 let's move into uh, some, some facets of this discernment challenge, okay? Let's talk about good and evil. Let's talk about good and evil. <clears throat> now, uh, we're living in, we're living in what I call contemporary, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, contemporary times. This is when the majority of us act as though, act as a God to ourselves, okay? We act as a God to ourselves. Let, 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 me, let me write it up here on the board for you. We act as, notice what I'm going to do. I put a little G. We act as a God to to ourselves, okay? We act, we act like we're God. Now, there's nothing new about that because you know what? When Satan came to Eve, Satan told Eve that she would be as little g God over there in Genesis uh, chapter 3, around verses uh, 5 and 6 in there, that she would be like God. And you know what? We still act like that now. We got people in church that act like they're little God. They, they, you know, they get a little nasty attitude. Little, little God, well, you, 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 you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me. I'm, I'm God. I'm God. You got to tell me something. Okay. We act like we're God. Okay. Now, that, that's true of all of us. That's true of me. There are times I act like I'm a little God. Okay. And we got, we got to get out of that. See, good and evil. The majority of us act as though we're God to ourselves. Now, now watch this now. Watch this class. Watch this now. If... This little God status, if this little God status were true, if it were true, no person would choose to do wrong, okay? If, if we all were little gods, nobody would do wrong, okay? <laughs> now, now, you know, you know, class, we have wrong going on everywhere. Wrong is going on in the church. Wrong is going on in the school. Wrong is going on in the family. Wrong is going on in your car. Wrong is going on in your house. Wrong is going on everywhere, okay? But if we all were little gods like we think we are, nobody would choose to do wrong, okay? Let, 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 let me, let, let, all right, let, let, let's, go, let's go back to the Old Testament for a moment. 
All right, let's go to the Old Testament for a moment. Go back with me to uh, the book of Proverbs. All right, now, a while ago we were in Job, right? Now, just go right over to the book of Proverbs. Uh, Job, Psalms, then Proverbs, okay? Proverbs chapter 14. And let's look at verse 12. I, I love this verse. I love this verse. You got your Bible? Highlight this in your Bible. Make this a concept of your life. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. You ready, class? Let's read it together. Let's read it together. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man or a person. And the end of, but the end thereof are the ways of death. All right, let's, let's, let's read that again now. There is a way that seems right unto a man. That's a man or a woman. That's generic. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me give you an example now. Miss Eve, as pretty as Eve was, as pretty as she was, I know she's pretty. I know she was a pretty thing. I, I, I can see Eve right now. She probably had a weave. She probably had some long eyelashes. She probably had on some, some, some good makeup. She had them long dangling earrings. Lord have mercy. She probably had on some pedal pushers. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't even know what those are. Anyway, all right, I, I can see Mrs. Eve. Okay. She, she thought she was tough. And she thought she was right in picking that fruit off the tree. Okay? She thought she was right. All right? But what happened? When she picked the fruit off the tree, the minute she picked the fruit, ate the fruit, gave it to her, you know what happened? The end thereof are what? The ways of death. Now do you know why? We have funerals. Just the other day here at North Shore, we had two funerals <coughs> in a matter of about three days. And we, we, we were serving probably some four to 500 people in each, each funeral, four to 500 people. All right? Why do we still face death? Because of terrible discernment. All right? Not handling discernment. That, that's a real issue. We think we are right. And the, and the end thereof is death. All right? Me, I guess while we're in the Old Testament, let me, let me give you another passage, okay? Go with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh, let's see. Isaiah. 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 You know, that, that, that's, that's one of the Isaiah, Jeremiah, right before Jeremiah. Book of Isaiah. Uh, let's see. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Now, when you go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is what we call a major prophet, and many times he, he is referred to as the Messianic prophet because he wrote about the Messiah, the, the, about Jesus. Some 700 years before Jesus ever hit the earth, he's writing about Jesus. And Isaiah 53 is the most powerful chapter. Isaiah 2 is a great chapter dealing with his birth and his beginning. Isaiah chapter 9 is a great chapter for Jesus. So Isaiah is the messianic prophet. But now, in Isaiah chapter 5, look at verse 20. What does Isaiah say? Now, Isaiah is inspired by the Lord as he writes. He says, Woe unto them that call what? Evil good and good evil. Now, that, that, that's exactly where we are right now in the great United States of America right now. We call evil good, and we call good evil. See, the people now, they, they call fake news true news, and true news is fake news, okay? That's, what, that's where we are. That's, what, that's where we are. We, we got a man running around right now, still running around four years later, saying that he is, he, he is the president of the United States of America, that he didn't lose. Okay? That's what, and you know what? You have about 20% of our country that believes that. That's what you call calling evil good, calling evil good 
and good evil. All right? Now, let, let, let's, let's look at the whole verse now. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Let's go ahead and read verse 21. Woe unto them that are, that, 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 that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Okay? Uh, let, let me say something to you. Your eyes, your sight can play tricks on you. So be careful of what you see uh, in terms of your discernment. All right? So good and evil. The right or wrong of a situation is not just a matter of personal thinking. In other words, you know, l l let me help you out this way, class. I know, you know, we got some people that think that, well, you know, see, I have education. I have education. Uh, I have a degree. I have two. I have three degrees, okay? All right. Well, that, that's, that's well and good. I'll just, I might ask him a question like, if you got three degrees, what temperature is your head right now? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just because you have degrees doesn't mean that your thinking is right. All right? But see, the right or wrong of a situation is not just a matter of personal thinking. Keep that in mind, okay? Now, it could be said, now, it could be said, the greatest sin of mankind, now watch this now. It could be said, here is the greatest sin of mankind is to change right to fit himself and not change himself to fit right. Okay? Y'all got that? Let me say it again now. It could be said <coughs> that the greatest sin of mankind is to change that which is right, like the, like, like the word of God. Change that which is right to fit himself. See, many times people read the Bible, they go into the Bible, and they want the Bible to fit them rather than they themselves fitting themselves to the Bible. All right? Change right to fit himself and not change self to fit right. L l l let me give you some examples of good and bad. The Bible actually fre uh, frequently speaks of good and evil. Uh, it talks about a good man and it talks about an evil man. The Bible talks about good works and evil works. The Bible talks about a good path and an evil course. It talks about good advice and evil counsel. It talks about a good name and an evil name. It talks about good fruit and evil fruit. It talks about a good heart and an evil heart. It talks about good morals and evil dealings. It talks about a good report and an evil report. So these are some good and bad that is discussed throughout Holy Writ, okay? All right, class, all right. Now, let, let's, let's move along in this class now. Let me give you some biblical failures in discernment. There are some, 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 some biblical examples of failures when it comes to the idea of discernment. Let's start out with the book of Luke. If you have your Bible, which you ought to have in my class now, don't come to my class without your Bible. But I want you to check me out, okay? Don't, 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 don't let me philosophize on you and say something that's not biblical, all right? Let's go to Luke chapter 12. Go to the book of Luke. In the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The third book of the Synoptic Gospels. Luke chapter 12. Look at verse number 16. All right? Beginning with verse 16, the Bible says, now this is Jesus as Jesus gives us a parable. What is a parable? It is a story, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, okay? An earthly story with a heavenly meaning, okay? Now, let, let, let's take a look at this parable. In verse number uh, 16, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, all right? And he thought, and then the man thought within himself, saying, 
What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow? In other words, I got so many blessings, I just don't know what to do with all of this crop that I have. Okay? All right? Then he says in verse 18, he said, this, here's what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns, and there will I bestow all my fruits. In, my, in, other, in other words, what I'm going to do is just build some bigger, I'll, I'll just build a bigger warehouse. See, I had a 500,000 square foot warehouse. Now I'm going to build me a million square foot warehouse. I fill that up, then, I, then I'll build me another million square foot warehouse. I'll just keep building warehouses, okay, and put all of my production into that. That's kind of like a lot of us. We're blessed to get certain things. Instead, instead of in, what, what we do, we, we just we, we, we put it in the garage. You, you, ever go, you ever go by somebody's garage? Man, I, so for some people's garage is just filled up with all kind of stuff that would be helpful to somebody else. But they, we just like to hoard. We hoard, okay? And some of us, we, we study the Bible and then we just hoard it. We don't share it with anybody. Don't invite nobody to church. Don't even share it with anybody. We just hoard the truth, okay? All right, look at verse 19. All right. Then it says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods. So in other words, now I'm, I'm sitting on my 401k now. It's time for me to retire. I'm just going to sit down now. I'm going to be fat, sassy, and healthy. Just sit down. In fact, I might, I might even just go on a cruise and just enjoy myself. All right? That's what he said. Take thine ease. Do what? Eat. Party, drink, and be merry. Just party, just party, 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 party. All right? Now look at verse number 20. The first word in verse 20 says what class? But. Now anytime in the Bible you see but, something is getting ready to happen. But God said unto him, Man, you, you are nothing but a fool. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast put in your warehouses? Okay? Ah, uh, you know, let me give you two, two lessons here of this food. And you know what? A lot of us have fit into that category in our own lives. All right, category, uh, here's, the, here's the first thing that makes us a fool, okay, in terms of our discernment. Number one is... We leave God out, okay? That's fool number one. We leave God out. You know, it's amazing. Do you know some people, <clears throat> when the Lord's day comes, that's, that's the day we are commanded to worship, do a complete worship of the Lord, we start doing our own thing. We've got to travel and all this kind of stuff and so forth, and we don't even think about worshiping the Lord. That's a fool. Anytime you leave the Lord out, you are a fool. Okay? Got that? So I, I, I'm not calling you a fool. Heaven is calling you a fool. Okay? All right? That's point one. Number two, you put trust in your inventory of storage. In other words, you put trust in your children, you put trust in your job. You put trust in your jury. You put trust in your house. You put trust in your car. You put trust, I got to take my baby to the, you know, we put trust, you know, we put trust everywhere but where it ought to be. That makes us a fool. Because everything we have, it is God who gave it to us. Okay? And that makes us a fool. All right? So that's the, that's the rich man who was called a fool. All right? That, that's, that's the guy who failed in his decision making. All right, let me, let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Since we're in the book of Luke, let's just back up one chapter to chapter 10. Back up to Luke chapter 10. Yeah, Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. Just back, you know, just stay in the book of Luke, okay? Go to chapter 10 and verse 38. All right, let's read this together, verse 38 to 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered... This is Jesus, entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received her into her, received him into her house. 
And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So Martha had the house, Mary was at the house, and Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Now verse 40, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. She, she's worried about the food. She's worried about uh, things looking nice, you know, worried about uh, getting all of the tablecloths on the table and, get, you know, get, 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 getting the nice glasses out and getting the, the silverware placed right, you know, the fork and the spoon just right. Worried about getting some dainty little napkins and all of that. So cumbered about many things. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve? She left me alone. And there's nobody helping me. You know, you see, sometimes we can be so busy doing what we ought not be doing and then blame other folk for not helping us. Okay? Now look at verse number 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art worried and troubled about many things. In verse 42, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from In other words, Mary made a righteous discernment. Sit at the feet of Jesus. See, sometimes what you need to do is back away from your hectic, busy, messy, crooked, wicked schedule and just sit at the feet of Jesus, okay? All right? So in this case, Martha's discernment was a failure. All right? Let me, let me, let me, let me give you another. Let me give you another. Let's go back one more book. Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, 22. Go to chapter 22 in Matthew. Let me call up some religious leaders. In Matthew 22, you know, we've got a lot of religious leaders now around the world. You know, people that think they're religiously astute. Uh, let, let's, let's look at Matthew 22. And let's see here. Let's start at verse number 15. All right, Matthew 22 and verse 15. Uh, watch this now. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Wh wh what's that verse saying? That verse is saying they wanted to trick and trap Jesus. That's, that's what. You know, you know, many times people want to try to trap you and, 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 and you know, they, they, come out of, they come out of a strange bag <coughs> trying to entangle you and, and they tried to entangle Jesus. Okay. Look at verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person. In other words, you, 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 know, you, you, you don't show any partiality. We know you, you're a special kind of man. See, they want to play that little game. You know, some people, what they do, you know what they do? They'll puff you up like a balloon. And then turn around and stick a pin in you and, you. and then you lose all that puff up, okay? All right, now watch what in verse 70. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Now here's the question. Here's the question. Here's the trap. Is it lawful to go to church on Sunday or go on a picnic? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. <laughs> Is it lawful? Is it lawful to go to work on Sunday and miss worship? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not what it said. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? That's the question. All right? Now, in, in, in verse 18, Jesus perceived their... Here, here's the thing about Jesus. See, Jesus can read the heart. Let, let me take station identification. Class, may I, may, I, may I just back off a little bit? Please do this for me. The Lord knows your intent before you exercise the content. Okay? The Lord knows what's behind your words, your motives, and everything you do. Now, you, you can hide it from me, or you can hide it from your friends, hide it from your parents, hide it from your spouse, hide it from your children, hide it from your boss, 
hide it from your teacher. You can hide it from the police when you're speeding, whatever. But the Lord knows your intent. So Jesus said, why, in verse 18, why tempt, why you test me, ye hypocrites? He called them hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. You're hypocrites. Look at verse 19. Show me the trick. Bring the money to me. Bring the money to me. That, 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 that would be, you know, that, that would be, let, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can. He said, bring the, bring the money to me. Okay. So, so they brought the money to him. Okay. Let's see here. I got a quarter here. Here's, here's the quarter. Yeah. Bring, bring, bring the money to me. They brought him a penny. All right. Now, now and then he said, now, whose image is on the inscription? All right. So obviously Caesar w was on, on the inscription. And they said unto him, well, Caesar. Then he said unto them, render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, <coughs> and unto God the things which are God's. And when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Now, what's, what's the message here? You, had, you have what is called uh, deceptive or tricky religious people. And, and, and that is a failure in discernment, being deceptive. See, we, we got a topic right now that people are very deceptive on, and that's a woman's health. That's a big issue right now, the woman's, the female's health. Nobody should tell a female what to do about her health and her body, but her, her doctor, and if she happens to be married, her spouse can intervene. That's it. That's it. No court, no judge, no congressman, no president. Nobody should be involved in, in somebody's bodily health, okay? So we, we see here the trickery of religious leaders. Let me, give, let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Let's go over to the Gospel of John. Go to the Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, chapter 8. Go to John, chapter 8, Okay? I'm, I'm going to give you time to flip over to John chapter 8, okay? Let's get over to John chapter 8 right quick. Okay. Chapter 8. All right, now, look at verse 3. John chapter 8, verse 3. The Bible says, and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him, unto, this is unto Jesus now, <coughs> a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay. Okay, she's guilty of adultery. That would be the same thing as a lady who uh, uh, had an abortion. be the same thing as a lady who uh, killed one of her children. This lady is taken in the act of adultery. Or it'd be the same thing as uh, the lady who had maybe poisoned her husband. Okay? All right? Taken in the very act. Now watch verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. So now they ask Jesus, these, these, these religious leaders ask, now, 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 what do you say? What do you say, Jesus? All right? What sayest thou? Now look at verse 6. This they said, tempting him. See, they, they're trying to test him. <laughs> that they might have to, so that they want to get something against him to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. See, sometimes when people get tricky, tricky, deceptive, foolish, crooked, undercutting, it's best to let it go in one ear and out the other. Okay? Let them get through with their antics, and then you teach them a lesson. All right? So watch, watch, watch this now. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, when they, they kept on asking him for an answer, because they, they just wanted, all they wanted to do was, they wanted to kill him. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to kill him. See, there's some people just, just want to take you on out of here. They wanted to kill him. All right? So they continued asking him. He lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. All right, if, if any of you that have brought her to me, you, you brought her to me, right? You, 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 you are a religious leader. You brought this adulterous woman to me. 
So what does the law say? Stone her. All right, pick up the stone, go ahead and stone her. Go ahead and stone her. Ye without sin? If you, if you are without sin, now that, that, that's the key. If you are without sin, cast the stone. Go ahead and stone her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Remember what I told you. The Lord knows what's in your conscience. He knows your intent. Went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, then Jesus turns and he says to the beloved lady, Woman, where are those, where are your accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now I want you to understand something about here. This is before Christ has died on the cross. And Christ is the Savior. He can say that. But see, after the cross, after the cross, one has to go through the blood of Jesus, first of all, by being baptized. Okay? But now, let, let, let's take a look at what, what some points we learn here. First of all, <coughs> I think there are about five, oh, there, 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 are, there are about four or five points here that I think we can share with you out of this particular failure of discernment. See, these, these religious leaders made some bad failings in their discernment by bringing that adulterous woman to Jesus. Number one, they did not bring the man. Okay? All right? So, so they brought the woman, but why didn't you bring the man that she was committing adultery with? All right? Bring the man. Where's the man? Okay? All right? All right. Number two. All right? What's number two? They made her a spectacle. All right? See, sometimes we want to put people on front street. You know, it's kind of like uh, President Biden's son. You know, President Biden's son, you know, they wanted to accuse him of some stuff to try to tie in the president. And his son was right there in the Congress one day, and he said, look, I'm here right now. Call me in right now, and I will not go behind closed doors to talk to you all privately. I want it on TV, radio, everywhere, publicly. And then you ask me the question. I'm not going to go secretly behind closed doors and talk to you. Okay? All right. So he made a spectacle of her. All right? What else? Number three. They cared less about her hurt just their point. Let, let, let me share this with you. See, sometimes uh, we as human beings, we want to get our point across, but we care less about who we hurt and how we affect the other person. And let me give you a fourth, I think, that we can learn here from this particular <coughs> example that, that, that Christ has presented here in, in John. We see the other's sin, but not our own. Lord, have mercy. That, that happens all the time. Well, you know, I, I, they, 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 they wrong. They didn't call you. They didn't talk to me. They didn't call me. They didn't treat me right. But what about your own self? See your own sin, okay? And then let me give you a fifth one. They pointed to another sin to whitewash themselves. Do you, let, 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 that, that's, that, that's a powerful one right there. Do you know why we as human beings, quickly point out the wrong in somebody else. Because by pointing out the wrong in somebody else, that makes us look good, we think. That whitewashes me as a person. If I point out your wrong, that makes me look good, okay? All right, now, let's close the lesson out like this here. <coughs> I'm going to give you about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to give you about eight guide points that I think will help you with what I call uh, the discernment challenge, okay? And I, and, I, and I think we need these. I think we need these, okay? Number one, number one, to handle discernment, you need Bible-based faith, okay? You have to have faith in the Lord. See, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't put faith in Satan. You can't put faith in yourself. You got to have the Lord's faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You got to have faith. Like Moses. Moses had faith. 
That's why Moses was able to do what he did because he had faith. Okay? All right? Let me, let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Number two, you need to have hope. Okay? You got to have hope. See, without, without hope, you become hopeless. And when you're hopeless, that, that's one reason why people commit suicide is because they are hopeless. That's what happened to Judas. Judas made a bad discernment decision, and that's why he committed suicide. Hope, 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 hope. All right? Let me give you a third one. You need love to handle, to manage discernment. You go, okay? Love. Okay, I, I think I think since we're here in the in the Gospel of John right now, aren't we? Are we in John? In, in John? All right, turn over to chapter fourteen, in John chapter fourteen, and let's see here, John chapter fourteen, and let's see verse twenty three. John fourteen verse twenty three. Listen to what uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, well, let's read 22 and 23 together. I, I want to get that. If we can get that up on the screen, we, we, we can. Don't worry about it. But in John chapter 14, verses 22 and 23. All right? In verse two, number 22, Judas. Now, this is, this is Judas who betrayed the Lord, okay? Judas said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? H how are you going to make known to us and not unto the world? And then Jesus said in verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will do what? Keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So if you have the right kind of love, both God and Christ <coughs> will be there to protect you so you can make the right discernment decisions, so you can distinguish righteously rather than unrighteously. What else do you need? Okay. All right. Number four. You need courage. You need courage. When Joshua took over for Moses, he had to have courage to go into the, into the promised land. And the first thing you had to do, he had to fight. Okay? See, sometimes to get a blessing, sometimes you got to fight for your blessing. But you fight a righteous battle and not an unrighteous battle. All right? What else do we need? Okay? You need, number five, sincerity sincerity and not deception. You got to be sincere to, 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 to make right decisions. Sincere about it. Uh, you, you have to have a love that's free of hypocrisy. Okay? All right, let me, let me give you another. Let me give, let me give you another. Let me give you another. Number six, you need to have caution. You got to be cautious. You need to have caution. All right? Caution, 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 caution. Ah, uh, you know, you got to be careful. You got to be patient. You got to have caution. All right? All right, let, let, let me get, all right, that's number six. All right, let, let, I'm going to go over here and put number seven. What's number seven? You need investigation. You know, let me tell you, if I can get that written up here. Investigation. In other words, in other words, before you discern or make decisions or distinguish, investigation before condemnation. How many times, how many times do we condemn and we don't investigate? Investigation before condemnation. And then, of course, number eight, number eight, you need to have principles. Principles. Okay? You need principles. Uh, and your principles should be connected to Christ. You need Christ like principles, okay? Christ-like principles. All right, class, you got it now? That's the discernment challenge that we have, and it's a real issue that all of us need to deal with. I want to express my thanks to you for being with me in this class. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for every day that you give to us. <coughs> we're thankful for the intellect that we have where we can make decisions that are under your auspices, and by the concepts that you would, uh, would have us to have so that we can make righteous decisions that's going to be not only best for us, but best for those that are around us. May our decisions be heavenly-based, Bible-based, and not feeling-based, and 
uh, personal satisfaction. Not about my personal thinking, but it's about what's best for those that are around me. And as we make decisions, may we make those that would be pleasing to you in every aspect of our lives. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I'll look forward to seeing you again in our next Bible class. May God bless you, and we'll see you next time.